In this video, we'll discuss oxidation numbers, specifically how do we use information about elements from the representative elements. Uh, the representative elements, remember, include the S block and the P block. So we need to recall the charges that these different elements will have as they form compounds. Hydrogen and the alkali metals have an oxidation number of plus one. The alkaline earth metals have a charge of plus two. The boron family, a charge of plus three. The halogens, minus one. Oxygen family is minus two. Nitrogen family is minus three. The carbon family can be either plus or minus four. Now, this information is really useful because we can deduce oxidation numbers for elements from within the transition metals or d-block elements. Let's look at a couple examples. Let's say that we have a compound of iron chloride and we have a chemical formula of FeCl3. This information about the chlorine will help us to deduce the charge of the iron um, ions in this compound. So for the chlorides, we know that they always will have a charge of minus one. There are three of them. So we need to multiply three by that charge of minus one to produce an overall negative charge from the chlorides of minus three. This means that the iron ion must have a charge of positive three. Let's compare this with a different iron uh, possibility. Iron can form compounds with chlorine in this ratio, one to two. In this situation, the chloride ions, there are two of them, they still have a minus one charge, so this produces a charge of negative two from the chloride anions. This means, in this example, the iron must have a plus two charge. So we can work backwards from representative elements to figure out the charges of metals where there are sometimes more than one possible oxidation state. Iron is an example of this. Iron can form either plus two or plus three ions. Uh, some other examples, copper. Copper can form either plus one or plus two ions. And there are other additional examples of this as well. We even see this actually with some of the representative elements. For example, lead and tin. Now, based on their position, you would say that lead and tin would form plus four ions. They can actually do this. However, sometimes they can form plus two ions as well, depending on the situation. So if we have this compound, SNCl2, we know that in this compound, the tin cations are forming the plus two charge if they're forming a compound with chlorine with this formula, we know that in this compound, tin is forming ions with a plus four charge. So this has been a brief look at how we use information about the charges of elements from the representative groups, that's the S and the P block, and how we can use this to backtrack and figure out charges for metals from the D block, or we also call these transition metals. Thanks for watching, everybody.